Kerbal Classroom. Welcome to class. Today's lesson is ISP or engine efficiency. The last thing that I wanted to talk about before we actually start doing some more launches is engine efficiency. So there's different uh, types of cars that you can have that uh, will burn fuel at different rates. The Prius, for example, can get about 50 miles to the gallon, or the Ford Excursion can get like 9 miles to the gallon. The difference is they're uh, geared towards um, different activities, and um, so the engines are built different. The Excursion has you know, 10 cylinders. The Prius, I think, has like 4, but it also has regenerative braking, um, better aerodynamics. It doesn't have as much torque. Uh, anyway, so there's different reasons why the engines were built differently, but the um, the main point is that they have different efficiencies. Same thing goes with rocket engines. If you look at all the different engines that we have, um, when we were looking, we could see the thrust that they produced and um, diff uh, the the weight of the 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 engine. But another thing that I want you guys to look at is engine ISP. ISP is a um, way of describing how efficient the engine is. The higher the number, the more efficient the engine. And so when we look at the most efficient engine that we have on here, which is an ion propulsion drive, the Dawn electric propulsion system, in a vacuum it has an ISP of 4200. If we compare that to the Hammer solid fuel, the Hammer has in a vacuum 195. The Vector has uh, 315. The uh, thud has 305, swivel 320, reliant 310. So you can see that most of the engines that burn liquid fuel are around 300. Um, the ion engine doesn't burn liquid fuel, it burns a different um, fuel called xenon, which is a noble gas. Um, there are other engines that, uh, oops, that instead of burning both liquid fuel and oxidizer this uh, atomic engine for example has an ISP of 800 it only burns liquid fuel it does not burn oxidizer and so when you're when you're building a atomic uh, engine fueled rocket you supply it with um, let me find it uh, so this one has liquid fuel and oxidizer uh, this one has just liquid fuel. You can see it over here on the side. Um, you supply it with uh, fuel tanks that are just liquid fuel. The xenon uh, powered Dawn, you give it a xenon uh, tank. And the standard engines that are liquid fueled, you use liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now, if you look on the actual um, thing, it says that it has propellants of liquid fuel and oxidizer for this Terrier, and it has a high. Um, ISP. So the other thing to notice is that atmospheric uh, sea level, the ISP of engines varies. So some of them are really great in a vacuum, but quite terrible in uh, atmospheric sea level. Uh, some of them are not quite so different, such as the swivel, 250 to 320. Compare that to the 85 to 345 uh, for the Terrier. So when you're launching, you want to choose an engine that is great at a atmospheric sea level um, by looking at the ISP there. And you want to have stuff that when you're in orbit and, and getting away from the planet that has a high, um, uh, high vacuum ISP. There are some engines that also um, uh, require uh, oxygen intakes for... Um, uh, when they're going through the atmosphere for space planes, um, the Rapier engine, for example, um, it says it, it um, uses liquid fuel and oxidizer, uh, but that it drains even the respecting cross feed, and um, it has stuff about, uh, oh, this actually has two engines, that's why. Uh, you can swap between the um, one that uses just liquid fuel and intakes air 
and the one that drains liquid fuel and oxidizer that's for uh, when you're up in, in space. Um, when you're using the uh, liquid fuel only one, uh, you need an air intake and it has an extremely high ISP of 3200. Um, anyway, uh, so that's uh, something to think about and um, I will show you some of the math in just a second. Here we are again on the wiki for KerbalSpaceProgram.com and we're going to learn the math behind specific impulse just a little bit. It's actually a very easy bit of math. Uh, specific impulse, as we s learned earlier, is the efficiency of an engine and it is measured um, as a uh, ratio of the thrust in newtons over the fuel consumption in kilograms per second. So that's all it is, it's just a simple divi uh, divide dividing of the thrust divided by the fuel consumption. So if you can produce more thrust for the same fuel consumption, higher ISP. If you can have the same thrust for lower fuel consumption, higher ISP. That's all there is to it. If you wanted to calculate the amount of ISP of multiple engines, here's some examples. For example, if you have six of these 200 kilonewton um, uh, swivel engines, and if you have a mainsail uh, 1500 kilonewton engine, and then you divide it by the fuel consumption, and then you can produce the ISP. So six times this plus one of that, and six times this plus one of that as a divisor. Anyway, if you want to look through some of this math, it's pretty uh, simple. Um, you just divide the thrust that you get by the fuel consumption in kilograms per second. That's all there is to it. Now that we understand ISP and thrust rate ratio, we can and uh, the basics of what delta V does, we can understand the actual equation to produce IS, uh, delta V. That equation is ISP times the log of the dry ma uh, the wet mass of the ship over the over the dry mass of the ship, and that's basically when you have a full fuel tank and an empty fuel tank. And so you just plug in the um, the weight of the vessel when it has full full tank and you divide by that take the log of it and multiply it by your engine efficiency and that tells you how much change you would get in velocity if you burn through the whole engine or if you burn through a partial amount of the engine you can figure that out as well you just need to know your fuel consumption in kilograms per second and the amount of seconds that you burn to know how much delta V you would be producing during that time frame. Here's an uh, example of a three-stage rocket uh, pictured over here on the right and basically uh, for each of the, the variables in here um, the full mass of the engine um, when it's at uh, the launch pad and when you've burned through the first stage that you've gone from 38 down to 14 tons the engine ISP of the three engines combined is 350 seconds and the total delta V produced is 3.3 kilometers per second. Once we jettison the, uh, decouple the, the first stage and we're in, in near orbit, we have a full mass of seven and a quarter tons. When we burn through the two tons of fuel with a 300 second ISP, the change in velocity is nearly a kilometer per second. And our final um, stage uh, weighs 3.72 tons, burns through 2 tons of fuel, and has a higher ISP or engine efficiency of 400 seconds. So it has 3 kilometers of delta V and for a total of 7.5 kilometers per second of delta V. Here's a couple of equation, uh, examples of if you have multiple engines and um, calculating fuel flow and um, and other things that are nice to understand when you're building advanced rockets, I mostly wanted to show off the equation for delta V in this episode, which um, it is this uh, guy's e rocket equation 
and he uh, wrote it slightly different um, where you multiply the exhaust velocity by the log of the um, wet over dry mass and um, so they say that you can also be you can also write it as the exhaust velocity is ISP times G0 um, where that's the standard gravity of 9.8 meters per second. Um, my understanding is that you don't actually change this based on the orbiting body that you're on. You actually just leave it this way uh, every time. So your homework is to read these two pages and the uh, specific impulse page and build some fun rockets.